Welcome to this week's Currently Trending with Harper's Bazaar Arabia, where we talk what's hot in the worlds of fashion, beauty and wellness. Hi, this is Louise from Harper's Bazaar Arabia with this week's Currently Trending. And I'm delighted to be joined by the lovely Maha Morley Kirk, who is the CEO and founder of Pinky Goat, a lash extension brand with plenty of other products too, that was founded here in the UAE in Dubai in 2015 and is gradually expanding across the world. And Maha has a great story of entrepreneurialism and vision. And, um, you know, she's really here to inspire us all and to see just where having drive and ambition can take us. So thank you for joining us, Maha. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure today. It's lovely to have you here. So tell me, how did you start out? You've actually got a really interesting story, I think, from from growing up in Lebanon and, and when you when you got your first job. Tell us about that. Well, um, I grew in Lebanon and um, with my age, um, it was like the war in Lebanon, the civil war. So I wasn't fortunate enough as like all the girls here, you see them on their laptop and phone and this, you know, we were like living day to day and we don't know what's happening in Lebanon because it was really not very safe at this time when I was around seven, eight, nine. So I grew up hearing a lot. I cannot remember exactly, but I know there was something not safe for me uh, in Lebanon. So we were uh, living normal life, but to live in this age and I have a daughter my age at seven. So I remember when I was seven and her age, we were very scared kids of what could happen. So um, when I was nine and 10, I remember I had to quit uh, going back to school because safety first and second, because my dad got ill at this time and we were only three girls. So one of us had to work to be able to help my mom. So I was the volunteer because... I wasn't really that good in school, I have to be honest. So it wasn't a very difficult decision to say, you know, I will work. I can work. I'm a businesswoman. And I still remember this word. At nine. Yes. So you left school at nine. I left school at nine. My mom pursued me to go back to school at 11. I went back as a part timer school for a couple of months. But then really I had a full time job by really 12. I was working as helping secretary of filing papers. And when I start to work, I start to feel the money. I got, of course, salary, but it's very, very small salary, but I felt so independent. And um, I still remember one story that I still tell to my husband every couple of months about my first salary when I had it. It was like $100 a month. I went to Pizza Hut and I treated myself to a pizza. And I sat by myself and said, oh my God, I'm a grown up girl. I can sit and eat a pizza by myself. And um, and then it's gone from there at 12, 13, I was still in the same job doing very well. And then I found my love for fashion. I was so interested in fashion and clothes. And uh, I started to walk in the stores. But of course, I couldn't afford to manage to buy anything because my hundred dollar has to go to the whole family. And then I saw an advert for a saleswoman. So I applied and they liked my interview. And then they found out I'm 14. They said, yeah, but we are not sure if we can hire you at this age with your experience. I said, so try me. So I worked and I did very, very well for one year until somebody has approached me and said, we are a company called Zara and we are coming to Lebanon as a first store in the Middle East and we would like to hire you. And I'm like, oh, great. What that mean? Is it same fashion? They said it's very high end for compared to the Lebanese market and it's a trial in Lebanon. So I joined Zara and after six months, I promoted as a visual merchandising manager and I was around 16. And then after that, I had to move to Kuwait because somebody discovered me again and asked me to go to Kuwait because they've been watching me with my sales skills and apparently I had something doing very right. And they approached me and I told my mom, I'm leaving Lebanon. And, wow, that and was you were, what, 17? Not or? yet 17, almost 17. So I had to work on a visit visa for a couple of years until to manage to get a proper residency. So I worked there for almost 12 years and promoted from store manager to head of visual for a lot of retailers. Um, traveled the world and I was studying English while I'm going because I didn't speak English when I went to Kuwait. So all my employees were uh, English speakers. So I didn't understand what they're saying. I had to have um, somebody translating for me. 
because I spoke only Arabic at this stage. So, and I taught myself through books and through travel, and I was so fortunate with the experience I got. And I think for me personally, I will say entrepreneurs are born. They are not something happened by accident. Because since a very young age, I knew I will be my own boss. And even when I worked with companies, I worked as I owned the company. I never felt an employee. I worked the long hours. I took everything personal with everything I did and pride and every store opening. It was like my first opening. Every new market, it was like a big thing for me. So I wonder, where did this drive come from? Did it come from your parents? I mean, it's very unusual for a, a young teenage girl to be so committed and driven and non-frivolous, I suppose, if I think yeah. of what I was doing at that age. I think for some reason, I, I had a lot of high expectation from myself. And I don't understand why I always expected a lot. Since young age, like expected to be the best and I work hard to be the best. I didn't just wish for it. And um, uh, it's always happened like I work hard for it and make sure it happened. And I always love to learn new things. Till this day, if I don't buy every week in the book, I feel something missing. I need to read books. I need to go to the internet. I need to Google and I have to go to YouTube. Because I love learning things like new ideas, new thing, what others they doing, not necessarily with beauty. I'm very interested to know what's happening sure. around the world. So you don't miss a formal education because you're constantly educating yourself. Yeah, I, I think that's a really a key. And I can just talk about my personal experience. I will. I wish everybody continue their education, you know, if they are lucky enough to be able to do that, because a lot of people take it for granted and think it's it's. You have to, everybody do. No, not everyone go to formal education and think. But the things I learned from the street and from travel and by sitting with big CEOs and owners and employees and everybody around you, you learn every day from somebody something. And I always love to sell. I have the skills to sell. And I love this about me because I, I love when I used to go, even a lot of people told me, but you are like the big manager and things, but I love to sell product. I love to talk to client because I feel I got inspired all the time of how they wear, how they talk. And because I've been in the Gulf for a long time, I lived in Saudi three years before I came to Dubai here and lived in Kuwait a couple of months in Oman and things. And I always got inspired by the Gulf woman. Yes. From the way they look, the dress, the makeup, everything. I'm so interested with the Gulf woman. And that's why for me, I always called Dubai home, even before I lived. I used to come since very, very long time, 25 years ago. And it, it was so different. And I always said, this country inspired me so much. And now it's so nice to finally call it home. So it's, it's very, very interesting for me, like this next stage. I've been here based almost two years and a half. Uh-huh. So Great. I'm so excited for the next journey. And, and obviously you, you're building this wonderful brand, Pinky Goat, yeah. which is a beauty brand. Yeah. Um, to date, I believe you've sold over a quarter of a million eyelashes. Yes, I can confirm <laughs> this at this stage. Which is an amazing <laughs> achievement in, you know, two years. That That's incredible. So tell us about how you made the shift from fashion, which is where you grew up and developed your career into beauty. And when you became an entrepreneur, why you made that shift? Um, I think it, it happened to me when I moved from Kuwait to Poland and I lived in Warsaw for a couple of years. It, this is the time where I first I had the first uh, break of the fashion world. I've been always in the fashion since I was 13, 14. And when I left to Poland, I started to see different things. And I was so excited about like beauty and makeup. And I always wear makeup and eyelashes all the time because fashion and makeup go together. And I start to get more interested. I start to learn about nails, nails extension and things. And suddenly I I start to see a couple of new beauty brands in Poland that I never seen in, in Lebanon. And this is where I started to feel like, okay, I see a business opportunity here. Maybe I can get this brand and open in Lebanon. And probably it's, it's the right time to go back to Lebanon after all these years being away. So I took a franchisee for international brand and I opened in uh, Lebanon for a couple of years. It went really, really well. I built an amazing relationship with all the professionals in Lebanon. As you know, most of the makeup artists are based in Lebanon. And here where I felt I have this amazing same feeling I had for fashion, same for beauty. And I noticed the gap in the eyelash business. 
because during 2013 and 14, all the makeup artists asked me, let's go help me to pick some lashes. And I'm like, why you don't buy from my brand? They are like, because there's no brand have all the lashes we want. That's why we go and pick from different brands. And I'm like, okay, so let's think about this. Maybe I should look at something to do with eyelashes for consumer, but also for the professionals. And this is how the idea started in 2014. I started to draw some ideas and I flew uh, to see some factories in Indonesia and in Asia, as you know, this the places where you produce the best quality of lashes. And I, as everything started to come together. And when uh, I went uh, to see my husband in Saudi Arabia, he was there at this time, I started to do brainstorming and about names. And here where the name idea came from, because I wanted something very quirky, but also a uh, different name. I wanted something very catchy. I love catchy names. And then my daughter came and she was crying. She lost her pink goat. And this is how the pinky goat name came from. So I wrote it down on my wall and after a couple of days, we never found it for her. And then I told her, I have this new brand. Do you think you will be happy if I call it Pinky Goat? So you will always remember it. And she said, of course, yes. And then that's how the name came. Oh, that's very sweet. And I love pink color. So Pinky and it was the goat year in 2015, the Chinese goat year. So everything made sense for me. And then we start to work on the logo. And uh, this is how we started. We started with eight uh, different styles. And I remember we were only online for 48 hours and we've sold on a, around 12 pieces. And I'm like, we've sold 12 pieces. Nobody knew we have even this website. It didn't go live yet almost. We didn't announce it or anything. That means there is some big potential. Yeah. And within uh, three months, we had over 45 different styles and already the name is out and big makeup artists using the lashes. And now you have... Over 100 styles? Over 100 different styles. And I, mean, I don't really understand how there can be 100 different styles of eyelashes. Talk us through how that... Yeah, because, you know, you have many different uh, clientele. You have makeup artists prefer different type of lashes. You have uh, Arabic women prefer the mink lashes. You have European, they prefer more the silk and synthetic. So that's why you have different... Uh, in our website, you'll find the glam collection, natural, the mink, the packs, where makeup artists buy the pack of five. So you have all different. And what we are very known about to always introduce a new product, Every couple of months, we have a new collection. And I think another big thing was the way we launched with influencers. The first influencer pack was in beginning of 2016. We launched with Maya Ahmed. We launched a pack and sold out in within five days. And it was a big success. And the second one was with the Real Foes and also was a big success. And the last launch was with the ladies. Is uh, We call them the sisters, which is they are the sisters, Sonia and Faiza. So we've been very well known about doing special product, work with the influencers from the Gulf and the, and the Middle East. So you need to keep come with the fresh ideas and new ideas. The eyelash is same like any other product. If it's a fashion, you don't wear the same clothes in the same season. And same for makeup. You always see a new product and same for eyelashes. Because a couple of years ago, people liked more straight lashes. Now they look for more fluttery lashes. And suddenly they look out for more clear band, which is we introduced six months ago. So everything have a new fashion and new trend. And if you want a new trend when it's come to eyelashes, we will be always be the first. Now, tell me how you name your lashes. You have an interesting way of, of giving the styles names. Absolutely. So when we started, we were very keen to keep the Middle East in mind because we are an, in the end of the day we are UAE brand and we are very very proud of that so we made sure all the names have Arabic names so the hundred lashes is all mostly Arabic name from Noura to Maha of course and you have all Arabic names so when we started we gave Arabic names but what happened after we start to get inspired by our clients so every time we need a new name we go to our website and see all the names of our client which is or 90% are Arabic names and we start to make competition online. We say, we're launching three lashes. Please give us your best names. You think we need to name our lashes? And everybody voted. And, and we use this name that they are come from our consumers, really. And I think what's, what's great about Pinky Goat is it is this very Middle Eastern brand. It's really got its heart and soul here in Dubai and in the Gulf. 
And yet what people maybe don't know is that you're sold currently in 300 super drug stores in the UK. Yeah. Superdrug being one of the biggest pharmacy chains across Great Britain. And I believe you're going into New Look soon. Yeah. Another super popular young fast fashion chain that's all across England. So how did you make that happen? How did you take this very mi Middle Eastern brand and bring it into the UK and not just into London, but across the whole geography of the UK? You know, Louis, this probably is the most challenging thing for you as a brand from the Middle East, because the first approach they're going to ask, first of all, like, but from Dubai, from UAE, not because they don't know the Dubai, but they've they are not used to. They are not used to get product. We always get product from them. So it was part of our plan and uh, um, expansion from 2016 is to go to uh, abroad, to be international. Yes, we are a UAE brand, but we always had the plan. And even if you look at our three years plan since 2016, it has which market we are going into. So it was not a sudden a plan. It takes a lot of hard work to to come and come and talk because we are a small brand in the end of the day. We are not coming part of a big group of uh, international group that it's easy, a phone call, they know you who you are. So you need to introduce yourself. And I think what helped us the most is um, our brand DNA. It seems like when people check us out on our social media, the website, they always get the feel and the uh, and uh, I think the packaging, the voice of the brand, it's always been the highlight from all our international retailers. Like they said, we love your social media. We love how you talk and the stories. We love how you connect to your customers. I think this is a very good step. And also your approach, because some of the um, uh, retailers will listen or uh, reply to you and some they don't even reply because can you imagine how many emails they get today from around the world because everybody trying to introduce but if you have a plan if you have a good product if you know where you're going and because at the end of the day big retailers they don't want to only sell what you have now they want to understand your vision what your vision what your plan where do you see yourself what the difference between your product and other product if you be able to demonstrate this it was very easy to get into after you demonstrate all of this. And of course, it takes you up to six months sometimes and sometimes a year. We have some retailers, we've been in talk with them a year. Yeah. And uh, you need to understand as well when you go to a different market, what the client want and how you are going to approach this client from PR view as well. Because people know you in the Middle East, but suddenly you are in the UK, Arabic name and Arabic writing. So how... Who who gonna wear? So we had a very nice plan when we went to the UK. We had press people helping us there. All the big influencers wear our lashes. And the best one, like when Superdark emailed us and sell all your products selling out and sent us picture with empty empty uh, uh, hooks on the, on the stand. And it was amazing. I would say like one of the best highlights last year. Yeah. So how did you get that first meeting with Superdrug? There was a bit of hustle involved. Yeah. As I said, it takes a couple of emails until they <laughs> they say, yes, we can talk now. I think that the minute they tell you you can talk, you don't need to question. If they said, we're meeting you tomorrow, you pick up yourself, still remember, uh, let's go. We don't have a ticket, no problem. <laughs> Call your husband. <laughs> let's meet at the airport, fly there, change your clothes there before you go inside the meeting and go straight to the meeting. So <laughs> like, you just flew overnight to take yeah. a meeting the next day. Yeah, absolutely. And I remember exactly the same thing happened in 2010 when I thought the brand I'm taking is a Polish brand. Their head office, I can see it from my balcony. They said, oh, sorry, you are international. You have to call. Uh, if you have a meeting, you need to meet us in New York. So we have to fly to New York. And my daughter was six months old. We flew to New York, but their main head office was just across my house. But it is what it is sometimes. And you really, things take time. And you need to be patient. And you need to take it. If it's easy, everybody do it, yeah? It's it's, it's a difficult and it's challenging. And if some people think, oh, I have a nice life now. It's my own brand. No, you need to sacrifice. You need to forget sometimes about weekends because you'll be working. Yeah. You're online working, you're customer shopping. So um, you need to be ready to take big step like this. And when you went into the UK, it's it's a different aesthetic yeah. um, to, to the Middle Eastern aesthetic. And I'm sure that the eyelashes that were available in the market were quite different to those that you were proposing. How did you adjust the brand to, to that market? Or 
I think first of all it was okay let's study the market there is a big four or five big eyelash brand what do they have yes we checked 90% we noticed they are all natural which is like European and what the UK people but from our study we felt but even if it's natural it doesn't mean that's the only one that the UK people will wear because we studied all the social media and we noticed a lot of influencers wearing big eyelashes but where the people are buying these big eyelashes So we took the risk and we launched the eight different styles of all big eyelashes. And one of them actually natural. And believe it or not, the natural one didn't sell as much as the other one. And this is what we noticed, like a lot of big brands have reacted to this. And they launched after a couple of months, a big, very uh, glamorous one. So it's really about having confidence in your vision and the DNA of your brand. And you kept the Arabic names, you kept the Arabic translation. Absolutely. Everything the same, different packaging. So it can be in the hook, but it's still same uh, print and same branding because that's what they were excited about, to have a different feel and a different type of DNA of a new brand. And they didn't want it because they didn't want it to change anything. They said, we love the brand how it is. Yeah. Now tell me about your most recent employee, because I understand you've recently hired your husband. Uh, if you said, I hope he's not listening. <laughs> yeah. Well, my husband come from a very big fashion and beauty retail experience, work from uh, in Poland or even in the UK with one of the biggest chain over there and in Kuwait and Saudi Arabia. And he was very well known of being the... Um, Uh, not only as an operation, but also uh, opening a bridge between the Middle East and uh, and the European and USA market. So it was really a, a natural challenge and natural adoption for me to have my my husband with his uh, experience. Because for me, I always know how to divide between a relation, if it's a family or husband and business. Like even from day one, we always have a business meeting in the house. We have office that we go and we totally have an office and business meeting every week. So I'm totally used to this type of relation. And it was really natural, not because, oh, I needed help because we could have hired an employees from outside, but I couldn't find somebody else I can trust with our plan for the expansion to the other markets. And he's been with us now a couple of months. I hope he's enjoying. <laughs> so who's the boss? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you ask me... <laughs> he's not listening, Maha. You okay. can tell us. You're if the you boss, right? If you ask me, I will say, you know, naturally, and I admit that sometimes I can be a little bit bossy. That's good. Na- with, with everyone. And I think a lot of people understand that. And sometimes... People, if they don't know me personally, they they can get off of it. But all my life, I have this bossy, uh, I, I know exactly what I want. So I'm not the type of person who I go and meeting. Not always I ask for opinions and things, but I always know what I want. The end of the meeting, where it needs to be end. And I think, thanks God, he's used to this because we've been together 10 years. So it wasn't a very big shock for him in the office, like how we handle meetings and things. But for me, I try to divide the job roles in the office. So for me, I try now to go away from the expansion bit. And I think Richard, he's the right person to take this with his team to, for the expansion to other markets because we're entering very, very big markets soon, like uh, um, uh, Europe, mm-hmm. all Europe and hopefully USA and a lot of other Arab markets that we are not into it to expand more stores. So I think we divided the job roles, which is make total sense because, you know, when you start in the beginning, you will be pulled for a lot of different. And as you, you are in the business, you will be pulled to do logistic and uh, you do the travel and you do staff training and do production and you're <laughs> visiting the factory. So it's, it's nice to feel I can take off my shoulder some of this bit and then he take care of the expansion. So I hope he's still enjoying. But I think, to be honest, if you find a way, there's the if you find a way, you and your family find a way to work together, and have the job roles divided, you can go so much in your business. And I think the feel is amazing that somebody you can trust to say, you know, this is the places you agree. Yes, okay, how you can do it? Then this is the way. You yeah. know, it's totally different feeling. Um, when you do it with part of your family and especially somebody I trust totally to take part of this particular uh, 
job. Sure. And you have lashes and I believe brow product. Yes. Do you, yeah. Do you have plans to expand into other areas? Um, I think we're trying to really be focusing on everything to do around the eye. Okay. And that's the reason we launched eyebrow product, you know, because with the social media and things, it was very easy temptation to say, oh, let's go now to lipstick. Everybody doing lipstick. Let's do highlight. But we're really trying to be specialized what we are good at. All to do with the eyes, everything to do with the eyes. So probably if we are expanding more, which is will be something in our plan for next year, it will be also around the eyes at this stage. Okay, so what is the secret to a great eyelash and a great eyebrow? If you ask me for the eyelash, there is a lot of aspects. First, the material, of course, because you can use any type of material if it's silk or mink, but still get the best quality of the silk and the mink. And also, of course, a lot of people think it's an eyelash. I will go to a factory and buy. We never just go and buy the, the bulk. Probably we like some of the style, but always it has adjustment from us. The way it sits on the eye, the way it's curled, and it's the way to have the, um, the band, which is this all the secret of it. Because a lot of brands, you see the exact same lash, but when you wear it, you will feel the difference. Right. So you shouldn't be able to feel that you're wearing them. Exactly. It yes. has to be super light. It ha and also the best quality is the one you can wear it 10, 15, 20 times if you take care of it. And most of our lashes, even the cheapest one, you can wear it up to 10 to 15 times because of the way it's made. Yeah. Do you wear lashes every day? I wear every day. I wear natural during the day and always for dinner. I love glamorous lashes. Even if I have a small eye, I try to cut it and wear a very glamorous one. And it, which is your best-selling style? We have five best-seller lashes that has been since day one. And we will never, even we introduce a new collection, we'll keep all these lashes like Dunya, Noura, Sabrina. It's all uh, some uh, mix of human hair and silk mixed together. Uh, Arwa is very best-seller. And Nagam now is the latest one, Nagam from the Mink Collection. Oh. All our lashes are handmade. And each lash would take around 20 minutes to make. And I think you can't, you give a lot of feedback, don't you, to your customers on social media. And if they ask you for advice, someone's there to help them, maybe to answer in Arabic if required. Absolutely. We have in our uh, website even a live chat. People can talk to us direct. They talk straight to the makeup artist or to one of our team. They speak English, Arabic or other languages and they always help. If they say we would like to send an eye picture, they talk to me direct. I talk to clients on a daily basis. They send me their picture. I advise what eyelash they can wear on a daily basis. Ah, so someone can just kind of send you a photo of their eyes and then you can tell them which style is going to suit them best. Absolutely. So what style should I have, Maha? Uh, you have beautiful eye shape. <laughs> it's a, a round almond. So you can actually suit most of the lashes because when you have the almond style uh, eyes, you can wear most of them. But because I can tell what type of style your makeup, you are more natural person. I'll definitely give you Dania lashes. Dania. Okay, amazing. Yeah, it's one of the best seller with the makeup artists in Lebanon. They all love it and a lot of celebrity wear it. Great. So where can everyone across the region get Pinky Goat? Uh, across the region, you can find us in every lifestyle store mm -hmm. across all the region, over 100 stores, in all Wujuh stores, in Robinson's in uh, BHV in City Walk in UAE, in Turiano in Abu Dhabi. Uh, online, they can find us on cv.com, namshi.com, and of course, pinkygod.com. And a lot, a lot of salons and retailer as well, they sell through online. So really, you can find us over 100 locations in UAE only. That's wonderful. And just finally, what are your ambitions for the future? Where will we find you in five years' time? In five years' time... <laughs> I think one of the, this year was plan is to be on airline and I was so happy to be on the airline last month. We are in Fly Dubai and we are on Saudi Airlines. Oh, so we can buy your products yes. while we're flying. We are the first eyelash brand ever on airline. Uh -huh. So you will find us on every um, Saudi airline and also the private jet in Saudi. You find us on Fly Dubai, Oman Air and hopefully soon in a lot of other airlines. And we will be in a lot of duty free this year as well in five years time i would love to be in every country around the world because why not and um, continue to grow and be the leader of the the eyelash uh, business 
because there is a lot of other brands and I got inspired, of course, and we watch every brand because you always need to see what other companies doing. And But what we achieved in three years is, is unbelievable. We are planning to be in around a thousand store by end of this year. So we are, we'll be in 700 in the next two months. So mm-hmm. we're still on target for this year. Because okay. I think a lot of people deserve a nice, lovely lashes. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, congratulations. It's been incredible to hear about your success. Thank you. And um, how you started, you know, at the age of 11. And now to have nearly a thousand stores is, is really a, a wonderful achievement, particularly for a Dubai-born brand. That's great. So thank you for sharing your story with us today, Maha. And check out Pinky Goat Lashes. Thank you for listening to Currently Trending with Harper's Bazaar Arabia. For more, visit www.harpersbazaarabia.com or see at Harper's Bazaar Arabia.